Let's okay. just have an open discussion, yeah. a dialogue about making film art and friendship <laughs> and love. Starting in three, two, one. So this wasn't just a normal feel-good story. Um, you know, it, it, you clearly had a purpose with storytelling, which is something that we always care about. Um, how well do you think that the film did in terms of taking away the notion that a person who has Down syndrome doesn't have to live life sheltered because of perceived limitations? That's a complicated question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll say that we really just wanted to tell a story with Zach. And I think it was very specific. Like, we knew Zach and we knew a bunch of people with different abilities. And the, I don't even know that we thought about it that much. I'll say I didn't. It was as just as much as what came out naturally. It's how we are with Zach every day. It's how we are with yeah. a bunch of our other friends. And that's a story that felt authentic. So like even the storyline of like enjoying wrestling is because Zach likes wrestling. Um, the, the location is where Tyler grew up. Yeah. And we took the things that we knew really well and just tried to put them in the, we went to the library and checked out like how to write a movie and put them into that narrative structure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really serious. That's what happened. It's true. I got a library card and some, some late fees, actually. So I get movies on a library card, too. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess to speak a little bit more to that as well, um, I'll admit, I, I think that it wasn't like to, to come out and be this voice for disabilities um, certainly wasn't my intention. It was really to make a movie with Zach, and I think I had just seen people maybe not treat him as an equal and I think uh, injustice really chaps m my butt. <laughs> it really bums me out and so when we were writing as a team I really I think this is something I had seen you know people treating Zach in a way that maybe isn't as equal because of the way he looks and so that came out but it, it, it isn't I don't think it was until really recently I started to see that this this stone we threw in the pond, the ripple effect is maybe something that I was unaware of. So, um, you know, I, I told the story a couple times, mm -hmm. but uh, just the other day at the leadership conference, uh, I'll tell a different one. There was a mom at the leadership conference who was crying. We walked in this thing, we were supposed to go in and just talk for a few minutes about the movie, and we came in a little bit early, and this woman was like crying, and she was like, these, my daughter is eight, and these children, these children at her school are calling her a monster and saying she looks like a monster. And she's like, I don't know how to stop it, and like, I can't figure out how to, um, how like tell eight-year-old little kids to not be mean to my child, and and she's feeling this terrible thing. And it was this moment where I was like, oh lord. And then we were like, we started talking about our film, and then she saw it and. It was like one of those moments where she was like, oh, if, if I can just get these kids to see this movie, maybe they'll stop saying this stuff and they'll see my daughter as just somebody who's a little bit different. You know, it's... it's uh, Stories are really powerful. There's, there's ways you can sort of sneak in to a message without being right on the nose with it. Yeah, it's like spinach and apple juice. You can get a spinach smoothie that's a little less sweetener in there, you know, <laughs> make it funny and heartfelt. But you, know, you can really... I, th I think there's some... You know, our film's not a message film, but it's not, not a message film. We were just talking in the Uber about some of the scenes that we really enjoyed and where Shia LaBeouf's character was telling Dakota Johnson's character how she yeah. was unaware that she was being ableist. Yeah, if you're, if you're being that. too nice, there's the, the coddling that happens. And I think, you know, in, in our community, um, that's as off-putting as using language, derogatory language. So, you know, kind of wrote a scene around, it, scene around it, and it works, I think, also with Shia's arc and Dakota's arc, it's sort of perfectly, like, there's no, they're both sort of yeah. wrong to begin with and, and learning from each other. Yeah, you go into a gas station, and when we're on a gas, like, I don't know, some other people are talking to you, like, like, slower, like, because they don't think you can understand English, you know, and I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, you're not, you're not saying that word, but you're kind of saying that word, you know, you're treating him in a way that's like, a certain, you know, we don't know the way, you know. So I know you didn't intend this to be a message film, but when you were writing it, was was it part of the writing process to kind of challenge the derogatory language that people use? The, the goal, I think, to be, like with the R word specifically, was to be authentic to Zach's experience and the hardship. And, you know, Zach's character and you in real life, you uh, sometimes get frustrated, um, have ambition and goals, um, work ethic, and I think, all those things, if you don't show the challenges, I don't think you can really see how much work it takes to overcome those challenges. Um, so, 
We, we just tried to really go at it head on. I've heard people, I hear people say that word all the time, bless you. No. I hear people say that word all the time. Like, it's, it's, it's not like, and it's also not a judgment on them, like, they might use it, no, it's, I don't, I'm not like, oh, get them, you know, but at the same time, it's like, oh, like, I'm not going to say it in front of us, it's like, you know, it's like, we, we had to talk about it, it's real, you know, otherwise it would have been a saccharine, like, super sweet film. Yeah. And so, obviously, people are talking about the fact that Zach is, is you as a lead, um, and you having Down syndrome, that's not something that we see every day um, where people are casting authentically. And I know that this film was made around you, which was spectacular from the beginning. What do all of you say to filmmakers who are still scared to hire, to cast actors with disabilities, you know, and want to hire someone to pretend to have a disability? Oh, is that uh, I think about, um, um, I would say about um, 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 producers. Yeah. Don't um don't have to be um scared about like a um lot of things uh, uh, about me. But um uh, most um most people have been uh, you know um all them um love me and and we we always you know just do um um hang and have a good time and um, just have, you know, the um, party, party together and, and, we, and, we, have, and we have been a uh, very nice time together. I think we really lucked out. There was early on in, in our journey to get the film made, met with a handful of people once they started reading the script and they said, oh, I really like the script. Can you get somebody able-bodied to play this role? And we're just like, no, 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 way. no that's not going to happen. Um, but everyone we ended up with, um, the guys at Armory, Chris and Tim, and Albert and Ron, were all like, they got it. Yeah. Was so it, we, we wound up with a great team there. Was it harder to get financing at the beginning? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, turned, we turned out a couple million dollars to do it with a movie star yeah. in that role. Yeah. You know, it was a big deal for us. We were, didn't have any money. Yeah, we were broke living in a tent in the woods. We had made a promise to Zach. I made a promise to Mike that we were going to uh, make this movie, you know, ride or, ride or die, you know, like, and um, it was, I don't break my promises, and I don't break my promises to Zach and Mike. These are my best friends, and I'm not going to say I'll do something and then not do something. And so it was interesting, like, they're like, all right, you're also having a baby, you know, a few months later, and I thought this movie would take us two months to make. I didn't know it would take us, you know, longer, and then, you know, finances come, and all of a sudden you got to figure out a way to uh, to save a couple grand a month, and then uh, the best option there was to live in live in the woods in a tent. So we lived in that tent for like a year, ten foot by ten foot uh, platform I built with. Did uh, such a good job building. Yeah, that it's tent. a beautiful tent. Really comfortable. Some scrap wood, uh, gotten like, you know, around that was laying around behind people's houses and stuff, and kind of slapped something together and. Lived out there in that tent while trying to get that movie off the ground, and you know we moved. I moved from the tent, I went from the tent to set in Georgia. So, yeah. what's next for each of you? Oh man, I'm staying present right now. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really all about like we worked so hard on this yeah. that we just want people to see it, and you know it takes so much energy to to try and make a little movie cut through. Yeah. Um, that we're really just yeah. here right now with this and with Zach and Tyler and this yeah. movie. I worked too damn hard to not be here right now with you. Because <laughs> if I was thinking about what's next, I wouldn't be here. That'd be a bummer, because I've been five years in that tent, and I'm grinding out in a tent with a baby, sweating, eating just enough calories to get by, losing 30 pounds. I mean, I was, I'm right here. I'm right here at the table of food over there, and, the, and fresh water and jug, and yeah, I'm grateful to be here. So do you know how to swim in real life? What? Do you know how to swim? I. Uh, Yes, I do. Yes, my days are such. Yeah, the best. So when you're writing arc, and this is what they what they said at the books, yeah. and we checked them out from the library, things that are different at the end than they were in the beginning. So we knew Zach was a great swimmer, and we could get there. Mm -hmm. So if we pretend he's a bad swimmer in the beginning, arc for that character growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, Zach was wanted to do more swimming. There was a lot of like it was so hot there between takes. we were, we were all of us were swimming. I was looking at photos of us today on set where people, all the camera guys are on a boat and you and I are swimming in the boat. You guys see that? Like just being like, they're looking down at us, we're like, eh, like let me frame it up. And we're in the neck deep water in the marsh. Oh, it was 90 degrees. It was so 90. You wanted to be in the water. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. It was a grind. Yeah. I was curious, the, the scene where, where the kid, you know, basically pushes you into the water from the dock. 
had something was that based on personal experience? Uh, yes. And I want to add to that because Zach, um, stunt coordinator, when you start to make movies with insurance and money and things, um, safety, yeah. <laughs> safety <laughs> people, they they bring in stunt people. And Zach stood up for himself at that point and he said, "Hey, I want to do my own stunt here." Um, Shia got to do his own stunt, and stunt coordinator was like, "I don't know, insurance." And then at lunch, Ty and I kind of snuck him out and we started jumping off, and Zach jumped off, and the uh, stunt guy saw him and was like, he said, like, I guess, I guess he can do it. Yeah, and right. then everybody put the cameras on it, and Zach was like, that's 45 what we're here for. Far, 45 foot fall. That's what we're here for, is let me treat me like everybody else. This story that I, that I think is interesting too is Zach is so good at being present, right? There's a different ability that he has that is not a disability, so it's more of like he's more equipped Super to be present. Power. Yeah. Um, so even our actors that were some of the best, the, the way they'll explain it is that what you're reaching for as an actor is being present. And so it's, you know, Shia told us it's intimidating to get into a scene with Zach because he's going to be there and he's going to be present and I'm going to be exposed if I'm not meeting him at that level. Like I have to work up to that level. So there was like an extra ability, I don't know what you'd call it, like not a disability. Sonar powers, you know, superhero <laughs> stuff. Anything else you want to add? No, I'll just say I'm super grateful to spend this time with you guys, and thank you for coming and talking to us about our film. You know, it's I I, I appreciate the work you're doing. I appreciate the work all you are doing, and and um, it, you know, hopefully for all of us, this film can carry a message um, greater than ourselves. You know, that's pretty pretty exciting to think about. You know, what about you, Dad? Um, same thing. I uh, I I do. I really do love you guys here right now. I want them. I want. I want these two to find a very nice house for them. That's really sweet. Man. Thank you. I, I want to add to this. Actually, I, um, I'm excited for people to see the performances. Yeah. Like Zach does so good. Chai does so good. The co like the whole cast. Thomas Hayden. I'm so proud of the work everybody did. I just. I really want people to see it. I'm really excited. Me too.